All right, well, hello, friends. Coach Bob with you, and today we are going to be out on a little bit of a trip, a little bit of a journey. I uh, hope you join me and just hang out as we uh, cruise on the beautiful Can-Am Spider RT 2019. Had a lot of people here lately asking me which model I do have. So this is a 2019 Can-Am Spider RT. This is not the limited edition, which means that it does not have the heated passenger grips, does not have the heated seat, does not have the fog lights, and does not have the running boards. It's got the traditional motorcycle foot pegs, and which I like as a motorcycle guy. I uh, recently repaired my backrest. You guys know that I have the big bike parts backrest. Um, I recently uh, bent the uh, metal bracket uh, back to where it should be. Uh, I did not have any um, anything welded, so I know it's more fragile now than it was before I started the repair. So I'll just have to be careful with it. But I wanted something for a little bit of lumbar support and to give Coach Vic something in front of her. So there's that. All right, so the topic of today as we ride on this beautiful, beautiful sunny day in Tallahassee, Florida, right behind a couple of pickup trucks that won't go. Oh, I know that you never experienced that. I'm the only one that gets stuck behind cars. <laughs> nah, I know we all do. It can get frustrating. Just enjoy the ride. But what I want to talk about today is the idea of giving back. What, what does that even mean anymore? You know, do we give back as riders, motorcyclists, and that sort of thing? Most of the people that I know um, that are on the Can-Am Spider, we'll say a lot of us are a little bit longer in the tooth, a little bit older. Um, and I think that, well, I don't think, I know that most of you, uh, judging from the comment section, are extremely intelligent, articulate people with a vast levels of experience and knowledge in a lot of areas in life, not just motorcycle riding, but life in general. And I think a lot of times we're, we're afraid we're going to be pigeonholed as the old know-it-all. Now I'm not saying go up to people and start just beating them to death, that ain't what I'm saying. But as a motorcycle guy, for example, let's say you've ridden motorcycles for the last 30 years and you've stepped into the three-wheeled world and, and now you're a Can-Am Spider rider. A young guy doesn't know that. They don't know that you rode, you know, Harleys and that before that you raced motorcycles and before that you rode mini bikes and before that you were on a battleship in the Korean conflict. They don't know that about you. And so what you have to do is you have to be bold enough to drum up a conversation with that young person knowing that you do have something dramatically in common with them and that is a passion for motorcycles and the things that you say through conversation is you share your wisdom your years of wisdom um, is going to help them along their way make them a safer rider and a better rider now today it's it's funny what what it brought this to the forefront of my mind I got a phone call two days ago uh, from a, a young lady that teaches at, it's it's not a, it's a homeschool group, but they go to school. It's kind of weird. It's uh, They have these little groups that pop up, right? And so all the homeschoolers are taken to this location and homeschool mothers who have areas of expertise in these different arenas um, they teach those things like you may have a, a mother that is actually a, a science teacher we, we do have a friend that is a science teacher um, but she doesn't practice it by profession but she's educated to teach science at a collegiate level and probably has if I'm not mistaken I do believe she has taught science at a college level and she teaches science for homeschoolers it's really cool they volunteer their time and they all work together and the mothers that have weaknesses in certain areas, they go, hey, I'm not very good at math, I'm not very good at science. If another mother is saying, well, I'm great at science, but I'm terrible at language arts or, or literature or whatever, and they all work together in these programs, um, they find their, level, their levels of comfort of teaching, and they work together, and they pull together, and that's where we're headed today. And I was asked, um, it's the last day of their life skills class 
um, it was interesting because the life skills class, I mean, it was everything from balancing a checkbook and, and handling your finances to car maintenance, um, budgeting, uh, showing up to work on time, uh, preparing for a job interview, real life skills, things that, that people need to know. And uh, so the teacher of this class, knowing me, she goes, oh, for the grand finale, coach, we want you to come in. We want you to share with them some things about life and discipline and self-control. Stop at this yellow light here. And so that's where I'm headed right now. And after doing that, I have track practice. But I, I want to encourage you um, get involved in these things. You, you know, so often we just complain about life, right? We complain about the world, how terrible it is, and how young people are this and that. But that's not, it's not necessarily true. It's just what we see. And I'm going to tell you that I coach kids a lot, and they do every bit as much as I did. They work just as hard. And if my expectation is high, they always seem to deliver. So don't give up on young people. That's, uh, don't get jaded with it. It's so easy to do in today's world. We see things on TV and we start believing that stuff. It's not necessarily the truth. In fact, it probably isn't the truth. Judge the way people are by the way people are. You know, how, how are you treated by people? And judge young people by the, by the merits of what they do, not by what someone tells you they did. And you have a lot to offer. You know, eight years ago, I was uh, working for the Federal Aviation Administration, and if you were to ask me uh, if I was going to be a coach of any kind, in any capacity, I would have told you, absolutely not, I, I won't be. I, I you know, um, I want to retire. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be riding motorcycles again. I had ridden before, um, and I really wasn't sure what I was going to do. But I decided to, to do it. I was asked to be a swim coach uh, by an athletic director who knew me from doing the Ironman. So they knew I'd done a two and a half mile ocean, uh, you know, open water ocean swim. So they knew I had some knowledge and discipline in that arena. And, and so knowing who I was, and I had a kid at that school at the time, she goes, hey, would you be interested in being the swim coach or at least an assistant swim coach? And I said, nope. <laughs> I really didn't want to do it. But begrudgingly, I went out there and I loved it and it was wonderful. And I've been doing it now for, I don't know, six years, coaching swim. Five, I think, for track. Five or six for track, something like that. Um, this would probably be my last year for track. Not because I don't love it, but because taking care of my mother has gotten exceedingly uh, more time consuming. And so I feel like I'm compromising between one of the two, right? You know, I, I either don't perform to the level that I should while taking care of my mother, or I don't perform to the level uh, that I should by showing up to track in a, in a timely fashion, prepared. And I'm not that kind of person that, that sacrifices um, quality. Um, the concept of let your yes be yes and your no be no is one that is extremely important in life. And uh, so I know my limitations, and that's where I am. So obviously things could change next year, but that's where I am. I told the kids, I told the athletic director, they were all sad to hear that I probably won't be back next year, but, but they, they understand. And I told them that it, just because I'm not coaching doesn't mean that I won't come out to some practices and encourage you and certainly go to meets and, and cheer you on, to which they were super excited, and so am I. So what I'm going to do is I am going to head up here to this little area. It's called Four Oaks. It's a little church um, where they meet. And I'm uh, going to share a little bit with these young people for about an hour. Uh, I don't know that they'll allow me to run the cameras inside at all, you know, due to privacy of children and that sort of stuff. But, but whatever they let me do, that's what I'm going to do. So let's run up here. And encourage others because you my friends you are a guru and you can do the same before I shut down here just like I didn't think I was going to be a coach you may not think that you're going to be and so 
don't sell yourself short you never know you just never know what's going to be put in your path <laughs> all right so next stop four oaks let's do this I'd say that I am a visitor. <laughs> There's Coach Vic. She's coming to watch. Encourage me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you bet. Have a good one, brother. A lot of really nice people having a uh, sand volleyball game going on over here at CCS today. So as you can see, uh, the uh, landscape has changed quite a bit because I am no longer at the um, at Four Oaks. I'm over here by the by the school. Just finished track practice. It's hot. It's uh, 91, and this was parked in the shade, so it is a true 91. In the sun, I will say that it is significantly warmer than that. But the time with the kids was a smashing success. I really do enjoy encouraging others. Here we go. Um, sharing what we've learned along life's journey. I'm going to have some bracelets made for the channel that are going to say CB3 on one side and the other side they're going to say Guru and uh, it's uh, for being a good uh-huh writer uh-huh uh, I've had a lot of friends come up to me and it's funny the, the, all, the first word always seems to begin with a G uh, it was good rider. Uh, the other was geriatric rider. <laughs> and another one was genius rider. And I'm like, GR. And they go, genius rider. And I say, uh-huh. And uh, that's guru. So for all you gurus out there, I'm going to have some bracelets made for that. And whenever we do things, we'll be handing those out whenever we go places along with our Seize the Day bracelets. And Coach Vic's Overcoming Obstacles bracelets. We get quite a few of these things. We like them. The kids really like them. They wear them. Uh, the Seize the Day bracelets and the, the 537 Overcoming Obstacle bracelets. The kids love those things. So all of my more mature, experienced riders, and even my younger, less experienced riders, don't forget to share your knowledge with others. If you've been riding a long time, just because someone's up in years doesn't mean that we don't want to hear what you have to say. Um, the, the guys that are teaching me to ride, every one of them are younger than me. Some of them decades younger than me. They have a high level of skill. So make sure that we encourage each other along the way. Also, I want to take this opportunity to ask you to give this video a thumbs up. Like it, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. And a little update on our trip. We're looking at June. Just not quite sure when we're going to depart in June. Depends on what we do first and what we do last. What I mean by that, whether we're going to go to Key West and back first or do Key West on the way back and close the loop on the back side of the trip. Just not quite sure yet what we're going to do there. It was funny, Coach Vic yesterday was talking about we need to just go ahead and go. We have time right now and things are as simple as they're going to be. In fact, they're going to get more complex as summer moves on. So I pulled out my phone and I said, 
what's the name of the place that we're going up in Maine Fort Kent it's like mile marker one on US one up at the northern edge of uh, of Maine and she goes yeah that's it Fort Kent I said okay well let's look at the temperature <laughs> It was 23 degrees last night. <laughs> I said, so let me get this right. You're ready to go up there now? It's 23 degrees. It's not Florida, baby. Um, so it looks like we're going to delay the trip until June. You know, see the kid running out there waving. I mean, if we could leave early and we could possibly do the spider rally in Hot Springs on the way back, we'd have to leave in late May, uh, head down to Key West first, come back up through Tallahassee, and then do the spider rally on June the 10th, uh, then head out of there to Niagara Falls, then another two days up to Fort Kent. And then figure out what we're going to do as we pick our way back down south. Um, I, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a, a kind of a hard, fast rule for up north, and then heading south based on time and feeling and all that stuff. We'll we'll decide what we're going to do. How many of these really big cities we want to get deeply involved in in the traffic and all that. Also, I was asked recently about the trike fest when it was going to be right now trike fest is not posted up when it's going to be um but the deland spider rally for the wounded warrior project and all that they're doing that i believe that's in september i'll drop a hard date and the link and all that down below and but yeah we're, we'll be trying to go to that one as well so we've got hot springs in june we've got the land i believe in september Last year, uh, Trike Fest was in October, maybe early November. I can't recall exactly when. And then, of course, Biketoberfest. We'll try to go to that as well. Normally, Biketoberfest, Coach Vic passes. She's not into the two-wheeled scene, but I will do everything that I can to be there. Maybe meet up, have some lunch with folks. I had a video recently, a video request recently of um, how to shift the spider, how shifting gears and you know all of the throttle type response. I'll be coming out with that video pretty soon. Uh, it'll be a Saturday video here in a couple of weeks. Had a lot of interesting things happen on the spider here lately. None mechanical, just just safety wise um, the world is getting less and less safe it seems people are less and less engaged in driving so please do be careful while you're out riding as I said on an earlier video look twice save your life you don't want to assume that others see you because they don't and sometimes it's not because it's their fault sometimes it's just due to the position of the vehicles as, as you've seen. All right, well, we're gonna end things here. I'm gonna cruise on back to the house. It's been a wonderful day. Uh, a lot of encouragement, a lot of fun. Live your life to the fullest, you guys. I mean, really, really do. It is, it is awesome. So I want you to do me a favor. Until next time, go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself, and remember, if you're not having fun, you are definitely doing it wrong. Now you go seize the day, and we will see you on the road real, real soon. so much fun.